everybody, and welcome to the virtual Mill Valley Film Festival. I'm Zoe Elton, Director of Programming, and I'm very happy to welcome you to our conversation with Lemoine Jeremiah Mosese about his film, This Is Not a Burial, It's a Resurrection. Jeremiah, welcome. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, thank you. I'm very grateful for having me. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're very grateful to being here and joining us and also for your film. Um, I'd love just to talk a little bit about you and your, your journey. So you're from Lesotho in Southern Africa, but you live in, you're in Berlin right now, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so how long have you lived in Berlin? I've been living in Berlin for, I think it's, it's been nine years now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's been fully nine years. So I'm almost Berliner. Well, I don't know when you are actually Berliner. Some people say after 10 years, some people seven years. So I already I see myself feel Berliner in a way. You feel like a Berliner. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> How has living in Berlin shifted or informed your experience of growing up in Lesotho? Hmm. I mean, does, has it shifted um, your attitude to what was your home? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, they do, of course, there's a, um, there's a lot of things that changed. Um, um, I think one of the things that is the, the main thing that changed is how I can appreciate my home, mm. how I can appreciate, um, I don't know also if it has something to do with growing, that I can now appreciate um, our folklores, I can now appreciate our stories, I can now appreciate my country, not necessarily from the nationalistic or patriotic uh, place, but more like you just have an appreciation because you see it from the distance. And I feel like this sort of have shifted a bit uh, that you have, you have now sort of an aerial view. You have now this eye, I, 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 eagle eye bird view. Mm. Um, and this made me appreciate it a lot. And also even to critique it, like in the way where I, I critique it politically, like with my last film, which is Mother, I'm Suffocating, this is my last mm -hmm. film about you, it was pretty much a love letter or essay um, about the, this relationship that I have with my country mm -hmm. and, and also my identity, dealing with my identity, living in Germany and also, um, you know, not necessarily belonging to the space, but be, I'm a part of the space. And at the same time, in my country, I, I, I belong to the Sutu but I don't necessarily have a part of it because I'm always spaceless. I'm always in between uh, these two spaces. And, and I feel like it somehow helped me in a way to live in these spaces, especially creatively when I was working, um, um, when I was writing a lot. But at the same time, it made me feel like almost pretty much lost in a way mm. that you don't have necessarily a hold. It's almost like this ground that is holding and it's, you know, beneath your feet, it's almost shaking. It's not really stable. So it makes you a very lost person in a way, personally. But creatively, it sort of inspired me a lot. Um, um, yeah, it has inspired me a lot, yeah. It sounds like it's, it's, uh, it's been kind of liberating for you as an artist. It is, it is, it is liberating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, let's talk a little bit about your, you know, your work as an artist, because this film to me is so much, you know, it's a piece of art and artistry um, in a way that, uh, you know, some films are, you know, driven as a story, but one of the things that I felt about it is that you set a tone very early on um, and you set an aesthetic and you really draw us into it. Um, could you talk a little bit about your approach to your work with this film specifically. Um, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of things I'd like to ask you about. I mean, I feel like, for instance, your, your use of music, you mm -hmm. have this percussive, almost discordant music that, you know, that scores the background. Could you talk a little bit about your choice of music? Um, you know, uh, uh, when I was shooting, I was shooting, uh, I think it was a, some video installation that I was shooting. And then I was in, the, um, in, the, in, in, in one of the areas in Lesotho and I met this musician who plays 
this instrument. It's called Lisiba. It's a traditional instrument. Tell me again what it's called. And Lisiba. 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 Okay. It's a very specific for Lesotho. You don't find it anywhere, not even in South Africa, but you find it particularly in Lesotho. So uh, this guy who plays it is, was very, also very mystical about it. Like, um, like we will ask him, can you play? But you will have to wait until the sun is setting in such a way for him to play. Really? And I fell in love with these ideas, these rituals behind um, playing. Because, you know, we were just coming as, this is just an instrument, just play. You know? <laughs> so, but I, I like the, the passion and, and, the, and, and the, the whole story behind it that, that goes into him playing. Yeah. And um, so I was intrigued. But I've always been intrigued. I always thought it's really beautiful classic for me. When I hear it the first time, I, I've always loved it. Even when I was visiting my grandmother in the mountains and the shepherds, the shepherds will always play this instrument. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, I, I've always had this idea of trying to mix it with like a typical classic or maybe even noise music and try to make a, 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 a sort of a fusion between these two. And I felt like it's something that could be done, but I, I, I've never seen it been done before. And then I, I have a friend of mine, we have a mutual friend of mine who actually scored the film. He's a Japanese um, and, and noise musician, and he's not even trained He's, he's not even a classic music musician. He's like a noise, electronic noise musician. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I knew that he, both, in, uh, um, we create from the same space. Yeah. Like it's not necessarily about the technique, getting right with the technique. It's always start first with the feeling. And then afterwards we can talk about the technique. We can talk about how we make it sound technically. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that we both create from the spaces. Um, of going by the feeling. You know, you mentioned ritual there, and I think the way that you set up the film with this sort of storyteller griot who, who sets us up for that sense of, um, uh, you know, the depth of generations and the way that we connect with generations of stories is very ritualist, is very ritualized, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the film. Was that always your intention with that character? Yeah, very much so. I think also um, the 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 I think well, it has to do with also my household and uh, has to do with you know, the country of Lesotho because it's very mystical. It's yeah. very mystical. I mean, even our generation grew up in a time where the the, the you know the the, the legends, the the, mm. the the witchcrafts, all mm -hmm, the spirituality, mm -hmm. the, the the shamans. This at that time when I was growing up was something that was very common. And to hear the stories about this, I feel like it's sort of into it's in the fabric of my creation. Yeah, like there is always this, and I don't even intentionally do it. It's just something that I feel like it just comes out. Yeah. Um, I'm so full of it. Yeah, that yeah. It, it it shows in my work, but I don't intend to make it. Uh, even this legend when I wrote it. And then they start to feel like when I was writing it, it started to feel like someone who's not there, but who's there. It's almost like, it's almost like a, 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 a um, if, for, when I wrote it, it was inspired by, by Sephora. I don't know if you know the, this biblical character called Sephora and um, I think it was Moses' wife. Yeah, I think it was Moses' oh, wife um, who sort of intervened. It almost like was intercession, inter, um, um, interceding uh, between Israel and, um, and, and God. Yes. So I, 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 when I read the story, I find it fascinating. Mm. And I wanted to create someone who is there, but who's not there. It's almost like he's interceding. It's someone who's sort of travailing with his words. It almost becoming a lamentation of the drowned city. Mm. Um, so this was inspiration um, behind that character. Yeah. But eventually it became sort of this sh shamanistic, almost mystical character. Yeah. Um, and then most of the feedback that I got, people actually have this feeling about this character. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting too, because, you know, you're invoking both spirituality and Christianity. And there's that great dichotomy in a lot of the continent of Africa, you know, of, of having these uh, different religions. I mean, I think I, I've heard someone say that, I think it was about Burkina Faso, that it was like a 50% um, 50% Christian and 100% you know, spiritual. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, 
I mean, you, you, your references to spirituality, you know, touch on the Christian influence in the yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that I've been riddling with for a long time. And also it has to do with a lot of my conflicts and a lot of, um, of, of course, my experience and being part of, 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 um, of, uh, of, of Christianity, uh, I mean, I was born as a, as, as a Christian. And, but of course, at some point, you start to ask questions, you start to have this, some sort of conflict that you're working through in your life. And uh, so it always gravitates also in my work. And I don't even try to put it in my work, but it just comes out. Um, yeah. yeah, it just comes out, yeah. Yeah. I was very, uh, the, the, your lead actress is amazing. I mean, that is such, I mean, she does such a beautiful performance and, um, but she's, all, I mean, she's very charismatic and just sort of thinking about heritage in a way, in the way that we have been. I mean, she, I feel that she almost comes from the heritage of, do you remember, have you seen um, Idrissa Wedrao goes Yaba? One of the film about the grandmother, I think it was made in, I want to say the eighties, but when he oh, first wow. started making uh, films, he was making work that had a lot to do with uh, heritage, really. Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. think that that was one of the first films from the continent of Africa that I saw. He was from Burkina Faso. Yeah, no, um, I don't know this film. Yeah, you, I think you should see it. Um, I think you'd like it. Um, What's the name, of, the name of the film again? The film is called Yaba, Y-A-A-B-A. -A -A. Yeah, and it's by Idrissa Wedraugo. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll check it out, yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, you know, it's sort of interesting to me just with, you know, cinema from the continent a lot because I felt like there were these amazing filmmakers of whom he was one, um, a guest on Cabaret and um, uh, oh, Jabril Jotman Betty. Osman, yeah. Yeah, Osman yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there, it felt like there was a slump when 35 millimeter gave way to um, digital cinema. Mm -hmm. and, Right now, I feel like there, there are, there's a really interesting uh, generation of artists who work in film who are, you know, who are on the ascendancy, coming yes. from many, many countries in, in Africa, Kenya, actually, notably. Yeah. Um, I mean, any, any thoughts about what that feels like to you about the state of African cinema right now? It's, it's, it's really, uh, I think it's really amazing. Um, I'm very so grateful to be part of this, you know, um, of this people, of this young people who are creating work at this time. Yeah. And it shows so much of, it's not necessarily a single story anymore. It's not a single narrative anymore. Right. That there's different narratives, there's different cinemas, there's different, you know, depending on the country. Yeah. And we are redefining the, the narrative. Um, because, you know, uh, of course, with the whole perpetual, uh, perpetuating uh, the stereotype of what African films should look like, should feel right. like. And now I feel like the films are so good that, not even necessarily good in terms of quality, but um, just in, in, in terms of the subject matter, it's almost like becoming very, almost global, that it's not just I'm watching African film. Yeah, yeah. So I think this, for me, it's very exciting. Uh, we're still not there yet. Like I was talking to a friend of mine, like, I wonder if, if I can make a film like a cycle mm. and be seen as a cycle, as someone, not necessarily as a collective, that, oh, okay, uh, we are like this, you know, that it's yeah. not like that I, I, we, are, we are being generalized and we are being pigeonholed into that. It's more like a single narrative that, oh, they have a problem. Why would, why, why would you do this? There are people that were, you know, to portray the whole savage, you know, image and which is like the which is the, the fear of it i mean to create the work like this for instance which right. i feel like maybe at some point we can create the work that it's not going to be necessarily um be seen as african thing but it's seen as a character as a flaws of a character or as a mm. this particular individual it's not necessarily representing everybody yeah so i feel like we still have a long way to go but at least um there's like a couple of films that have come out and that are totally different and that dealing with the different things and yeah. um, and it's not necessarily about upholding image of african new african image that we all uphold uh, about future Afri uh, afrofuturism um of course right. there are other films that do uphold that image which is so beautiful 
but also it's not like we are now monolithic that we can just all uphold this beautiful image. No, people can, we are all artists and we want to critique sometimes. Sometimes we want to build the world, sometimes we want to spit on the wells. So like to have a freedom to be able to express yourself. And I feel like this is uh, what's happening right now. And I'm very, very, very happy to be part of this. Yeah. I, I think also, I mean, I hope that there is a sort of a movement towards seeing Africa not just as a continent, but as, as yeah. its individual countries and individual cultures. You know, I mean, yeah. if we can get past that, that would be... Yeah, no, that would be fantastic. Be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, the, 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 there's so many films that I would like to do, but I, don't, I know that it wouldn't be good f now to do them. It wouldn't necessarily be the best thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, because we're still dealing with, the, you know, like colonial legacies that comes with a uh, certain portrayal. So it's, right. it's not necessarily the, the best thing to do right now. I wouldn't be the part of the remedy, the yeah. part of the solution right now. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So also you become, you become a prisoner of that. So you become right. pigeonholed yes. because of that. <laughs> yeah, so true. so true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd love also just to hear a little bit about your aesthetic decisions. One of the things that I found so striking in your film is the color blue. Uh, yeah. I mean, I loved, there's a, there's a shot where we see a profile against blue. There's the shot of her your lead actress sitting on the bed and it's, you know, it has this blue curtain and it's a, it's such a striking color. Anything specific you might want to tell us about that or just about yeah. your aesthetic yeah. choices in color, you know? And yeah. Hmm. Um, it's always so complex to, um, right. uh, to, talk about the reason behind be, be behind the be, be behind the choices because uh, um, sometimes I'm afraid that it will pigeonhole the audience in terms of what I thought it was about and somehow they can write something else. Yeah. Uh, but there are many ideas. There were many ideas. First of all, I mean, I wanted to build a house as a tomb, mm, like yeah. a tomb, and yeah. you can get this a little bit from the monologue of the yeah. wall of bewilderment. Yeah, and and I felt like also to play around with the ideas of heaven and hell, uh, uh, concrete and abstract, and mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and night. Yeah. So this is like a, the, the duality that I've been creating throughout the film and with this blue palettes and, uh, and a very, also very um, elaborate uh, colors. Yeah. It, it's always been these dualities that I've been working on and throughout the film as sort of motifs um, yeah. so, and I also wanted to leave it as an interpretation, like I wanted to really create paintings for all these segments of the film, every segment, I wanted to create a painting yeah. that can be totally interpreted differently, but Beautiful. also it has so many ideas, so many yeah. ideas behind this. Um, yeah. So you must've worked very closely with your director of photography, Pierre Villiers. Yes. Yeah. Did, did you, was that, was that the first time that you had worked with him? was the first time we worked together. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, was the first time, but he's a partner of my, of my producer. So right. we've been talking about this project before and she, he, he, he was coming from the commercial world. He has been shooting commercials. Oh, interesting. Not a, not a feature film. Um, yeah. So, and then we, we've just been talking about it and I, I like some of the aesthetics and I understood how he, he understood the sun. He has so much respect for the sun for the mm. movements of the sun. And, yeah. um, and then it was a very good um, collaboration in a way uh, to bring, you know, to, to, to bring this together. Yeah. Because I was, I'm, I'm coming from the visual, from very visual aesthetic. Yeah. And, uh, but not necessarily technique. So working mm. with him was really this beautiful collaboration that he brings technique. I bring the visuals. Yeah. And, and also he also brings the visual as well. Yeah. That he had like other suggestions and I'll be like, oh, I love that. So let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that collaboration really shows, you know, and the, and the yeah. strength of it. It's, it's beautiful work. Um, we should probably be wrapping up, but I, I mean, there are a thousand things that I would love to ask you. I mean, how, just generally, um, when you begin a project, where do you start from? You start from an image or words or yeah, it, 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 rigorous it really, as an artist, you yeah, write every day. Yeah. Or? 
I think it starts from everything. Um, sometimes it, te- it comes from the text or it's a poetry I'm writing. Um, right. Or it's a title. Um, or it's a face. Um, that's why there's always so much of a close-up because I wanted to get the landscape of Mary. Yeah. The face as a landscape. Yeah. And yeah. all the characters in the film as a landscape and, and have the landscape as a character. Mm. And uh, this inspires me. The, the human landscape inspires me a lot. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the inspiration. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And just one last question. So you grew up in Lesotho. What was the first film you ever saw? I you know. think the film that I still try to recreate the feelings of it, even now in my, with my work, is The Platoons. Oh. The Platoons, when the soldier was left uh, behind and he was raising his hand to Skywards and mm. they were firing at him. And this, for me, this image stayed with me. And I, 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 this is the only film that I remember, but I, I, I've watched many other films before, but I don't remember any other film that I've watched. <laughs> this is the only uh, film that I, I remember, so it might as well be the first one. Right. <laughs> it sounds like it was the emotion of that image that really got to you. Yes, yeah. yes. It's the feeling. It was just beautiful and, yeah, it was just surreal yeah. to me. It was an out-of-body experience. Wow. And can you describe yeah. for an American audience who are not able to go to movie theaters right now, uh, I'm in California, uh, we can't go to theaters. What was the room like where you saw that film? Was it a cinema? What was it like? Um, which film? The, the Platoon. Oh, the Platoon. Oh, it was a really abundant cinema that was, uh, during the night, it's used by everybody. Um, the, the, the street kids, um, the, the sex workers, uh, the, it was like a drive-through toilet. <laughs> so during, <laughs> so d- during, the, during the weekend, they would clean it up and, um, and block the windows with this black plastic that had holes and they project the 16 millimeter films there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, a, it's a whole story of my life with this my encounter with cinema with this particular space. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but this is where I came alive. Like a, you know, like a, <laughs> <laughs> like a moth becoming the butterfly. And this place really, I, I, um, it really, you know, changed and saved my life. Mm. Um, as far as, you, you know, it was around the community that I was growing up with. So this film, because the film became almost the fabric of our society. Everyone was talking about films. It became everything. This place was everything for all, all of us. Um, so yeah, it's a very dear place for my heart, but it's no more, it's not there anymore. I yeah. think it's a testament to why cinema is important for all of us. And I, I really thank you for, for this film. It's absolutely no, thank an exquisite you. Thank experience. You. Thank you um, and thank I'm glad you. that you saw films when you were a young person in Lesotho and yeah. uh, that you know, they blacked out the windows so you could watch those 16 millimeter yeah. films. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you knew about Mary just passed away, no? A couple of- No, I didn't know ago. that. Yes, she, she, she passed away on a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, it was very, I'm very, it was still so very sorry to hear that. Yeah. It's still well, very I'm, I'm sorry to hear that and I'm so glad that you immortalized her. Yeah, uh, and it was, it, really, it was really an honor and privilege to work with her. Um, yeah. yeah. Of course, now I want to know how you found her in the first place. Oh, because we were looking for, I wanted to work with the non-trained actors, mm. but uh, I knew the role is very complicated, especially for, uh, for someone who's like 83, 82. Yeah. Um, it's not many people who can actually still be doing acting at that time. So Kate, my producer, sent me the tape of Mary uh, uh, doing one of the lines and I just fell in love with her. And then I thought, okay, this is the right person to do. Mm. I mean, she's a gladiator. We wouldn't have done this film without her. She's literally a gladiator. Yeah. She works harder than anybody in this, um, in this film. Yeah. I love that her name is Mary as well. It's just yeah. very... Appropriate. It is. <laughs> it is a very much appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that image of her uh, mudding the floor. Yeah. So beautiful. It. it yeah. 
it honestly has made me think that I want to create a shack in my backyard in Oakland and take the, the soil and make a floor for myself. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, thank um, you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for no, your thank time. You for thank you me. for joining thank you for us. Having me. Thank you. And um, send my love to Berlin. I will. I will. <laughs> Next time you're here, let me know. Yeah. yeah, I will. I hope to see you there All sometime right. before too long. Okay. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.